Yeah, I'm Charlemagne the God. Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. This week's podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all on your terms. Head to squarespace.com for a free try. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start the show. Hezekiah Walker. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? Bro, I'm good. I like the energy you're on today. How's fatherhood? Yo, fatherhood <laughs> is great. Really? Yeah, fatherhood is great. What you learning new? Um, I finally learned how to make her laugh. Really? Yeah. How many months is she now? She's uh, six weeks. Six weeks. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. What do you do? I stick my nose in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> God, why? <laughs> See, what? this is how God works. This is God. Why? Everybody make fun of me for my nose. <laughs> I feel bad about it. I'm insecure about it. But then what does my nose do? The one thing I want more than anything in the world to make my little baby girl laugh. Does she bite it because she thinks it's a breast? God damn, bro. <laughs> That's what it I is. did think about that. That's what it is. I did. She's, She's not even young. Like, She's, She's six thirsty. weeks. That's right. She's trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? She's like, mommy comes with these things. Daddy comes with this thing. It's like, like, you know? She thinks a nipple comes. So she's like, ah. and she's like, get the. F After watching, I'm like, I don't want that shit. Nothing comes out of here. Nah, but, just, but just like air. I go like that, and then she laughs. It's fire. That's dope, man. Because I was beautiful. bombing for about four weeks straight. <laughs> I was bombing for four weeks straight with her. And Joe I was Coy to, uh, oh, my God. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Joe Coy was murdering compared to what I've really? been doing. Well, oh, my, and I'll do anything. What was you doing? The Google Gaga? Guy guy? Oh, Google Gaga. Wow. I did that one. I know babies be looking at adults like, why the, the fuck, fuck is he is saying this to you? me? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who the fuck? No, when, when will I ever say Google Gaga? Son. I done been here 20 different times. Yo. And they keep making the same mistake. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> reacting. You're not going to get a smile. Go get your wife so I can get some milk. Goo goo gaga. So uh, we also uh, started reading kids' books. Obviously, she can't understand anything, but you just do it to like have some. And uh, I didn't realize the, the, how emotional these kids' books are, man. Oh, uh, which one you on? Man, I don't even want to talk about it. Which one nah, you nah, want? Because it's gonna get me going again. I'm trying to move on from it. Which one was it, man? Uh, nah, 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 nah. I love you forever, bro. Oh, that let's was pull it a up. Let's pull it oh, up. I got it here. Don't worry. You got it? <laughs> I, got, I got it here. Don't worry. <laughs> I got it here. It's somewhere. I love you forever, it's bro. It's somewhere. Where's the book? <laughs> hey, where's I love you forever? <laughs> This book right here? Slaps. Waterworks. Slaps. Waterworks. Oh. Waterworks. Let's read it. Son. Let's read it. Son. Oh, it's only two seconds. Man. I love you forever. Love you forever, written by Robert Monks. A mother held her new baby and very slowly rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she held him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. The baby grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was two years old and he ran all around the house. He pulled all the books off the shelves. He pulled all the food out of the refrigerator and he took his mother's watch and flushed it down the toilet. Sometimes his mother would say, this kid is driving me crazy. But at night, when that two-year-old was quiet, she opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of his bed, and if he was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. While she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Damn! The little boy grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was nine years old, and he never wanted to come in for dinner. He never wanted to take a bath. And when Grandma visited, he always said bad words. Sometimes his mother wanted to sell him to the zoo. But at nighttime, when he was asleep, the mother quietly opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, and looked up over the side of the bed. If he was really asleep, she picked up that nine-year-old boy and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I love you forever. I like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Bruno Mars need to turn that into a song. Pay off Immediately. Debts. Pay off them fucking debts. The boy grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a teenager. He had strange friends and he wore strange clothes and he listened to strange music. Sometimes his mother felt like she was in a zoo. 
But at nighttime, when that teenager was asleep, the mother opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, and looked up over the side of the bed. If he really was asleep, she picked up that great big boy and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. While she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Man, please don't be a deaf in this goddamn children's book. That teenager grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a grown-up man. He left home and got a house across town. But sometimes on dark nights, the mother got into her car and drove across town. Get the fuck <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> All the lights in her son's house were out. She opened his bedroom window, crawled across the floor, and looked up over the side of his bed. If that great big man was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Now, come on now. Come on. Come, come on. on. Come on. You know when you sleep in you your mom syndrome? does that. Come on. Why is she still rocking him as an adult? Well, that mother, she got older. She got older and older and older. One day, she called up her son and said, you'd better come see me because I'm very old and sick. Oh, my God. So her son came to see her. When he came in the door, she tried to sing the song. She sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. Oh. Keep going. But she couldn't finish because she was too old and sick. Oh, my God. Keep God. going. Damn. Keep going. Oh, no. Keep going. The son went to his mother. He picked her up and rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he sang this song. I love you forever. I like you for always. As long as I'm living, my mommy, you'll be. When the son came home that night, he stood for a long time at the top of the stairs. Then he went into the room where his very new baby daughter was sleeping. He picked her up in his arms and very slowly rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while he rocked her, he sang, I love you forever. I like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Jesus Christ, man. My God. I mean, yo. Jesus Christ. Yo, I am I was weeping reading that to my daughter. Great man. fucking story. Isn't that great? Yeah. Everybody in there should be brown, though. So here's... <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. Because where is... The dad. Exactly. <laughs> like no, not one mention of the no, father no, throughout the whole story. No, son. Literally, we're talking about this on, on, on uh, Patreon, the Patreon, right? This is, this, is, this is crazy. I'm reading another book. I'm reading Corduroy. Okay. You know Corduroy? The I'm bear. Reading, yeah. Okay, yeah, with the bear with the missing button. Mm -hmm. I'm reading the book, and I'm like, and I pick up the book, and uh, the girl in the book is black, and the mother's black, and I'm like, oh, here they go with the diversity, man. They're going to change the race of the fucking characters of the book. Mm -hmm. Why does everything need to be diverse? It's an old story, whatever. I come to the pod, and I'm like... Yo, can you believe this, that they got this fucking DEI shit in children's books? Like, who gives a fuck? It's a story. They go look up the book. It's always been it's a always black girl. Black. It's always been a black yeah. mom. You don't remember because the story slaps. <laughs> you don't even think about it because the story slaps. Also, plus I remember the bear. I don't even remember the family. Yeah, I didn't. But how how racist is that of me? Yeah, 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 <laughs> Did yeah, I just yeah, see yeah. an old book that yeah. has black people in it? I yeah. go, oh, no, they switched it up now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. It's all about the story. That is so fucking sad. Is that not beautiful? It's beautiful as fuck, but it's so sad because it's like the circle of life. It's every what I was saying is like the, with the kids' books, the ones that are really good, yeah. it's you're not even it's not even for the kid, it's actually for the for the for the parent. Like you hope that the way that you treat your kid, one, you hope that they remember it and they care about it, and then maybe one day you'll get to see that treatment to you. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing is even after the grandma passes. Everything she did for him, he's gonna give to the next generation. Yeah, that's the EI too, though. Bro, okay. That guy's clearly gay. No mention of a wife. Yo, you know that's what I'm saying? so interesting. No mention of a he wife. He has a cat. He have a gay. cat. A cat. A gay. newborn baby. He's cooking fucking mushrooms. Like when you Bro, go look at was... shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's clearly a gay man. This who is adopted. a gay guy. This is a gay guy. Gay dog. man who adopted. <laughs> bought a kid. Come on, man. Just bought a fucking Come on. kid. Clearly he might be adopted because there's no daddy. So she might be a woman who never could have had kids. Oh my God. But forget all of that. The overall theme of the story is great. Love you forever, always. <laughs> what? <laughs> How you turn this beautiful also, a gay story dude, into a that? A gay dude would be a mama's boy like that. You know what I'm saying? 100%. He's yeah. getting rocked to sleep no. as a fucking adult. He just yeah. could be a Latino. Oh. Latinos still get rocked to sleep at that age? Nah, but they mama's boys. That's the also, craziest part. Yo, look how he's... Look at his mouth with that lamp. Ooh. Now, that's a little crazy. Hey, hold on. They doing this. A oh, wait, wait a minute. I didn't even notice this. That's a little crazy. Come out, man. Whoa. There's a guy... Clearly, ready hey, to get tea bag. Yo, exactly. <laughs> you that's, figured it out. That's what I'm saying. They done snuck the gay into my kids' books. <laughs> this this whole guy. time, I thought look, they would turn everyone look, black. They turned everyone picture. gay. Show people that picture again, man. The guy is ready to get goddamn tea. Also, bag. the mom got a sneak in to touch her. 
Let me see. <laughs> because he wouldn't let no woman in his bed. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this picture, man. Hold on, hold on, Look how this crazy. guy. This guy is. This hanging. one's crazy. Come on, man. This guy's hanging upside down. Nah, that's yo. crazy. They're just 69. They just fucking 69. Yeah, he just got 69. up. He's happy. He's singing about it. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Great story, though. I don't Phenomenal. want you. I don't want to take away from the Phenomenal theme of the story. story. Great fucking story, man. Love you forever. Like you for always. Y'all had to go JJ Reddick on, yo? Yeah, we had to go JJ Reddick mm -hmm. on, man. JJ had to pull up, you know, talked about all the racism he experienced. I was laughing at Dr. Umar's post on Instagram, right? Talk to Taylor, me. we're going to get to your by any means necessary in a minute. But Dr. Umar posted, no disrespect and much respect to LeBron James. He's a great father and a terrific athlete. However, in the spirit of self-determination and black excellence, why couldn't you find one of our brothers and sisters to pair up with for this podcast, given who you are? I'm trying to understand the need to go outside of our community for this. Snow Bunny Shannon Sharp is your biggest supporter. I mean, why not team up with him? This move makes no sense at all. What has this man done for you or us to earn this opportunity shaking my damn head let me tell you something man if lebron james was going to start a podcast strictly about basketball there's nobody i would want to see him do that with more than jj reddick yep. jj reddick is one of the most brilliant basketball minds Walking the face of the earth. Facts. Mm -hmm. It's just it, it, like the, him and LeBron, even when you listen to them talk, they break oh, that shit down like a math problem. The episode is out right now. It is absolutely phenomenal. And they are in no way trying to appease the casual basketball At fan. All. This is just for people who love the fucking game. And who know it. And who know it. And I'm, it's it's just awesome. I'm Googling shit if they're talking. I'm like, floppy. What the, what the fuck is floppy? Right? Or the other shit he was talking about. It was BBL. It was some <laughs> play LeBron was talking about. BB something. BBL. I don't know if it was BBL. What's a BBL? I don't know what the fuck he was talking about. He was like, this is the, the guy stands here and the wing goes here and this goes here. I'm like, yo, honestly, honestly, it's too smart for me. Ooh. Mm. I'm, I love basketball, but not in that way. Yeah. <laughs> like, I hear that. Not I in that, that way. I hear that. I don't need to know all of that. I hear that. I'm never going to use any of that in casual conversation. That's for coaches. Mm. It's for players. Mm. Like this is th that podcast is literally a podcast for basketball savants, Facts. people who are studying the game. Like, Facts. like if I'm a coach, you can listen to that podcast and, and just learn some shit. Absorb it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. so, so, yeah. I, I, you know, there's nobody I would want to hear LeBron sit down and and have a conversation with about basketball more. Like literally nobody. Yeah. I can't think of any one personality. Yeah. The only thing that I would say is that it, it, it would be like coaches because they too need to know the X's and O's. I've never heard coaches. Yeah, you're right. But I've never heard coaches talk the way J.J. Redick and LeBron talk. Yeah, I also think you don't get the opportunity for them to do it that much. But like, I'm sure like a Doc Rivers or a Coach K or a Mike D'Antoni breaking down offense, like some of these yeah. guys. And I think what I imagine they will do is eventually bring in maybe a third person to yeah. talk about specific shit. Hey, Mike D'Antoni, why are you such a prolific offensive coach? What are your strategies? What are you trying to do? And keep in mind, with basketball, it's not like football where like the playbook is top secret. With basketball, everybody's kind of running the same offense more or less, and you have tons of video to look at because you're going through the plays. That, so you can actually be forthright about your offense. Absolutely. Like You know what I mean? It's not like, a, like with a boxer, he might not give his strategy for an upcoming fight. Mike D'Antoni would be like, you know what we're going to do. Mm. Well, I saw in this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to run a uh, pick and roll and then let Steve Nash do whatever the fuck he wants. It reminds me of that um, ESPN used to do this show called Details. Y'all remember that? It was about... Uh, it was different. Like, Kobe did an episode. Kobe might did a few episodes. They basically had today. experts speaking yeah. on it. Yeah. And it was like all that X and O type shit in that way. So, yeah, I respectfully, Dr. Uma, I can, like, there's nobody. Like, it ain't about the look. It's about, like, who has that type of knowledge and who can talk about the game mm -hmm. like that with uh, LeBron James. Who's already a person? Like, who's somebody who's already a personality? Also, you know he used to rap, JJ? JJ what? JJ Reddick. Really? Yeah, he was a rapper. He was telling us. That's what he used to do. He shouldn't have said that. Why? <laughs> they could pick up them old tapes. No, he said he was looking for them for us. Really? Yo, he used to hit the cypher. I have a rap of him. He let any old N words fly? And he, no, no we, slurs. I'll try to get him. <laughs> I was like, how would you say this guy's name? And it was that uh, high school kid with, whose name Hilarious. is. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. But yeah. No, JJ Reddick's pretty much black when you think about it. Why? <laughs> He's got. <laughs> <What>? fucking guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. What? <laughs> Did what? you see that jersey swap? 
Oh, I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> did, you, did y'all ask him about that? Nah. So we should say, what do you think about black dick? Bro, black dick, <laughs> top two dicks out there. Who's number one? I mean, white dick, I, I like that. Oh, okay. okay. I thought you meant like dick oh, clock. I think we got to clip that one up. Why? <laughs> white dick, I like that. I like, I like, I like white dick. You don't pause no more, bro. Nah. But I like white nah. dick. You don't like, you don't like black dick? See, that's a rewind. He bought it back. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But don't you like your dick? Your dick is black. Don't I you like it? My dick, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't say I like white dicks. I like white dick. This, I have a white dick. I like it. Singular white dick. You know when women are in a relationship, they say that's my dick, right? No. So I can clip that part. You say, I like my dick. You standing there with your fingernails painted, your hand on your knee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? so, like, I like my dick. Damn, bro. Like, <laughs> out of context. Damn, that's bro. wild, Alex. Yo, Alex. I am going to rock you to bed every night, bro. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you say, I love I you like, forever. I like you for I always. Like. <laughs> my my, my mom will come be. after you, so. <laughs> <laughs> what we got, Taylor? All memes necessary. By any memes necessary. What we got? I don't. The I haven't seen streets, none of this shit. The oh, meme streets well, of Lower Darby. Oh God. <laughs> what did that say? Yeah, yeah. What did that say? Nah, Dwayne, Dwayne just Dwayne. trying to do anything he possibly can to make Good us boy. forget that he was the fucking most prolific offensive player for five years in a row. Dwayne Wade says his father and uncle taught him how to groom himself. I've been getting my nails painted since 07. I'm not just wearing clothes. I put that shit on. <laughs> That's so Preach. Sassy. <laughs> That's not sassy. Why y'all why y'all do that, yo? It is. Yeah. He said I put that shit. That, I'm not wearing clothes. I put that shit on. That's <laughs> slang. Nah, that's sassy. That's bro. Not Every rapper said that. Two that's been little, saying that forever. That's a little I love you forever, bro. Two chains been lie. saying that. I got that shit on. I put yeah. that shit on. Put that shit on. That's Atlanta slang. All the rappers oh, yeah, Atlanta, been saying that. Atlanta, Atlanta, the straightest right. fucking city. Oh, I'm just saying all the all the rappers in Atlanta <laughs> been saying that. I put that shit on. Two got, two chains from Atlanta. Yeah, it's two okay. from Atlanta. So it, makes, it makes more sense. I'm not calling him gay. I'm just saying. You just called him gay. Right. No, You're but the he, culture is the gay. The culture is gay. Atlanta culture is not gay. You're saying, you're saying the you city is gay. About? Is that what you're saying? Atlanta culture is not gay. It is a city that has a high population the high of gay population. people. You're right. Because I but love the, But the, if you have a high population of gay people, they're going to positively gonna be, influence the culture. Yeah. Look at New York. <laughs> Look at how positively influenced New York is, right? Oh, what, gays? 100%. Look at all the go? art. Look at all the culture. I mean, you like Broadway. You like musical theater. It's I not love straight Broadway. guys singing The Lion King, right? It's a bunch of pillow biters dressed up <laughs> you know as hyenas. Pillow biters are... You know why I always felt like pillow biters were disrespectful? What? Because you... Cause the reason wild. I always thought pillow biters were disrespectful because, like, if I was a bottom, I'd be so offended. It's like, nigga, I take this dick. Yeah, but I don't bite no fucking here, pillow. Here's the thing: you could be a top and bite the pillow because the ass so good. You'd be like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be a bottom lip biter. No, you'd be a bottom lip biter. You back there hitting that shit. You're like, I couldn't smell too. You'd be like, mm. ooh, it's Fuchi. Ooh, it's Fuchi. <laughs> it smell a little Fuchi. This See might, what gay gay culture this is might fire. Not be the right conversation for you guys. Yeah, what's? But the, I've got, offended I think some straight people earlier. Why? Oh, What'd because you do? I feel like straight men are obsessed with gay culture. No, they're not. The pause Hold situation. On. Hold on, let's think. Let's the think pause about it. situation is a little obsessive. Can I How, be, can I say one thing, Charlotte, about yeah, this? Yeah. I think that right now straight men have realized the great contributions of gay men. And uh I think that women are a little envious of uh, no, 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 straight no. men and gay men's newfound relationship, our love and our bond. Mm. We bond over our, our testosterone, our masculinity. Now you're left to the side. But that's they not They never wanted to hang out with y'all. We just were homophobic. <laughs> now that we're not homophobic, they're like, yo, let's kick it with them straight but, men. Yep. But it is still- <laughs> Y'all are jealous. The pause situation has to come to us. Pause, pause, pause has nothing to do with gay people. Yeah. You don't think so? No. no. Pause Why? is just some funny shit. But it that... has to do with something sexual. It'd be like, yo, hand me that ball. Pause. But that's what? just that's a, that's amongst us. It has nothing to do with nothing sexual. Do you remember just funny. Bad Habit? Did y'all ever have that game, Bad Habit? Where if you say a curse word, you get to punch your friend until oh, yeah, he yeah, says yeah, yeah. or until yeah. he says something else. Yeah. Like we just develop games where we that's can it. bully each other. That's it. Yeah, like punch buggy. A lot of the pauses yeah. have to do around sexuality, though. What you yeah, but it's just yeah, funny. it's just a game. It's not anything serious. And I love pause because it's transcended generations. 
That's We've good. seen rappers and everything else just say Paul just constantly. It's, it's not even about gay. Like, it's literally about anything. If you say something, about something going in your mouth, you know what I'm saying? Something in your butt. Like, it's just pause. It's just a joke. Come Me and my wife be double teaming with the pause. Nah, what are you saying? <laughs> you say something in our house, both at the same time, pause. You know what I'm really? saying? Like, the other day, so we had somebody in the house, they was like, y'all are both so immature. It's such an immature house. It's like... Immaturity's fun. Yes! Yeah. I'm not saying that. Nah, you're just trying to be mature. Once you get I'm our age, we're going to try to be immature, and it's so Certain much fun. Certain situations, you've seen it before, too, Shar. Like, like is this a little too obsessive? Give me, some, give me an example. We just... Seen one? Who, or Jordan like, Lucas? Yes. Wow. Uh, he, was little, he was a little old. He was because huh? he was pausing yeah. stuff that wasn't pause worth. Like what? Uh, Shit, I, I gotta so, think yeah. about. I'm like, wait a minute, what the fuck did you just say? Mm. I was like, oh, let me think about it. I don't think that was a pause. But it's like that's like I just don't like that. How is my policing itself? I can't be mad at him for policing but itself. But why is he like like doing it? So much? Like, I don't know. It's just. It's but weird it's part of the interview. Yes, the whole time. Really? He's just talking. He's like pause. Serious in my pause, like. He had some ones that were worth it though. Like okay. what? One point, one time he goes, um, "I was standing behind Puff." <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> you gotta pause that now. That's, that's a pause and a that's, that's a huge crazy. pause. No, that's wild. That's wild. <laughs> Why was he standing behind Puff? <laughs> it was in line somewhere. I made that up. It wasn't Puff. But he, did, he said he was standing behind somebody. He said he was standing behind somebody, and he said, pause. No, I, the only thing I will agree on, Taylor, a lot of pauses are being wasted now. Yes. It's unnecessary It's unnecessary pauses. for some yeah, stuff. Yeah, make it clever. Make it clever. Yes. Right. It's that's like uh, the joke before this back in the day was, that's what she said. Mm, right. When, you could, when yeah. someone said something that could be interpreted as something a girl said when I've you had sex retired. with her. You de- exactly. never that was the straight it. version of pause, and then pause came up, and it's, we just made the game gay. That's right. So that's it. If anything, we brought so gays exactly. in. It's it was with these the nuts call, before just, that. These nuts, exactly. Like there's a it's lot of these games. Though. Yo, it ain't about the gays. It ain't about say, the gays, though. yo. No, I, outside of that, the straights and the gays that are males have a relationship and a bond that's that right. you women will never understand. And that's something that's you got to right. respect. Look at Lamar Odom and Caitlyn Jenner. They got there a podcast go. together they now. They do. The Balls in Your Court podcast. Hey, Incredible yes. podcast. That's not the name of the name. That is not the name. No, it's not it. No, it's on, not it. Shut Stop it, the name playing. of it. <laughs> really? Stop <laughs> yeah. playing. No, it's not. The nice. Balls in Your Court. You didn't know that? Get the nice. fuck it's it's Lamar right here. Odom and Caitlyn Jenner have a podcast called The Balls Keeping Out with. Boy, shut up. <laughs> Yo. Nah, that's not the name. My shit way more fire. Keeping up with sports. That's Yo, they that gotta, is, they, they gotta, gotta rename that. that shit to the balls in your court. The balls right in your now. court podcast. That's fire. <laughs> that is fire. <laughs> Come on, yo. That is that's fire. A, that is a fantastic man. Nah, that's a great name. Okay. Um, what else we got, Taylor? Um, What's up, there? I thought this was a very positive. Um, meme. Oh God! No, it's good. You would Bro. like it. You would like it. I just thought of something it's funny. Kids. What? Talk to me. All right, man. <laughs> Talk to me. You know how like Caitlyn Jenner was a decathlete, right? She did the javelin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think that's what she did when she ripped it off the first time? <laughs> no, she still got it. She just. <laughs> <laughs> she still got it. <laughs> she never got rid of it. <laughs> and then with the balls, you did the one you circle she around. <laughs> Yo, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm surprised nobody ever made an AI meme of Caitlyn Yo, we running need to see- like Bruce. Cause you know Bruce, it's like why nobody ever did the AI where they put Caitlyn doing everything Bruce was doing oh, as an athlete. Idea. I thought you were talking about the AI of what that thing looked like. Damn, <laughs> what do you think that thing looked like? He still got it. Oh, she still got it. I know she got it, but now it's all there's all other estrogen in it. It's starting to clip nah, up a little. She's still like women. <laughs> That's what happened. Still, she's starting woman. to clip up a little. I will never forgive y'all, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> by y'all, I mean you Twitter motherfuckers. When I was on Twitter back in the day, and Caitlyn was doing that interview with uh, who was it? Diane Sawyer, maybe. All right. And she was talking about being a woman, but she still said she was like, I still I, I like women. And I was like, oh, she's a lesbian. I'm trying to be all progressive and shit. And they, they came. They that. fucking tore me a new asshole on social media. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? So what the, if, it's a, if we're recognizing her Damn, as a yeah. woman Damn, and she's yeah. with women, wouldn't that make her can't a lesbian? Can't even win, bro. Yeah. You can't even win. Can't right? even fucking win, man. Yeah. She is a lesbian. I would think so. She's a well, big she old so bully. Hot. You said she sells a dick, so. What's wrong with that? Lesbians can't have dicks? Not what real What you would tell me next? Men can't have babies? 
Yes. <laughs> this girl, like, is this girl progressive or not? <laughs> nah, she not. Yo. You are not progressive. I wish y'all. You saying a man actually, can't have no, a baby? I take that actually, back. I don't wish that no more. You don't wish what? I first wanted y'all to experience pregnancy, but I don't want that no more. Why? 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 Because y'all already taking mad shit from us anyway. Oh, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Why don't sure first of all don't right. y'all me? <laughs> yeah. Don't y'all nobody the in this room? Yes. Okay. Wait, what do you mean we took from? What did we take? We took gays from you, obviously. But what else? Edges. We nails. did take edges. Y'all edges do <laughs> definitely painted nails. Yes, definitely painted paint nails. nails. Hips. Definitely hips. <laughs> hips crazy. <laughs> Doing twerking. We got twerking <laughs> done. That's right. You got you got Gilbert Arenas out there talking about Saucy Santana's twerk. Yeah. All these women out here twerking. Gilbert said, nah, man. Nope. I looked at Saucy shit and I was like, shit. There it is. Damn. No, he there it is. Ass crazy. Exactly. Like, I'm Meg better than Stallion. you. Meg the Stallion. Better than me? Absolutely. You're right. All right. So <laughs> listen, how you, don't, don't say somebody <laughs> took it. God gave it to him. Okay. <laughs> right. That's a best, that's, What's he supposed to do? What exactly? What's Saucy supposed to do? You mad because you can't jiggle like that's Saucy it. Santana. I'm you. not that mad, but I will give him his props. Like that, that, that man can ball, throw it back. You don't even know what he identifies as, so don't say his. He does What does he as identify he... as? A saucy. <laughs> he, is, he is saucy. The what, man is sauce. What is this that you playing? Okay, this is on my so song's look, page. These says, this. are kids that are rapping about getting the honor roll. And I thought this was real cute. Oh. oh. It's hot. You gotta wait for the lyrics. Hold on. Yeah, I'm on the honor roll. You know what this proves? It proves that people don't dislike mumble rap. They just dislike the content of it. Talk to Because I can't understand nothing they're saying except for the hook. Just like really? most. You can't hear what they're saying? Neither, neither can you. Like I understood that whole shit. I understand the hook. I understood Whoa. the whole verse. Really? What do you say? I go to school yeah. because I have to. <laughs> <laughs> he likes I school. ain't catch that part. He likes yeah. good grades. His, he gets paid. I mean, I know, I know, I know the gist of the song. money for my good grades. That's what he says. That's not what he says. Oh, I did not hear that part. No, he goes, yeah. his mom pays him when he gets good grades. Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that. I, I understand the hook, though. I mean, salute to those young people. Yo, shout out to nice. them for all being on the honor roll. I'm not I'm mad at it. I thought it was positive, especially for the black. <laughs> I need to see some proof. There's a lot of kids there. All of them on the honor roll. I need to see some proof, proof yo. You can't sound like that. They had some. Yeah, I didn't see some they were proof, holding up. They were holding up their honor roll paper. But yeah, you can't just walk into like, your house and say, I'm on the honor roll, mom and dad. I need to see that certificate. Yeah, I need to see certificate. All I'm saying is they are giving a positive message, especially to the black youth. And I thought that was cool. Yeah, but but like most rappers, they probably capping. Stop. <laughs> they might be capping. Uh, some, I need to make sure that they're listening. See. Can they rap? Yes. Is the song fire? Yes. I can't Is go it to, about something positive? That's right. If I make honor and go to a, a fast food restaurant, they want to see proof. I want to see proof. I respect it though. I do. <laughs> I respect it. I'm I not need mad to see it. proof. And I like the positive energy that they're putting out. But I do want to say we're not in that bad of shape, y'all. Like, come on, man. We gotta stop this. We be acting <laughs> right. like we be acting like hip hop is like the worst I'm, shit ever. We these be are acting, kids, though. I'm saying singing it. I thought that I'm was. Always, I always see kids doing positive shit. You know what I be trying to tell people when they talk to me about like hip hop being fucked up no, this, and kids being fucked really up and stuff funny. like that. Y'all need to go see some other people. There's plenty of kids yeah. out here doing and saying positive shit. No, there are. I'm no, not no, I get what he's saying. No, no, I get what he's saying. Hip hop is not in that bad a state where we and I'm listen. If, if everybody likes the song, cool, salute, mm -hmm. I respect it. But we're not in that bad a shape where you know we we gotta post that and say this is what hip hop. They're should be going like. off the mainstream though. Hmm? They're going off the mainstream hip hop. No, what he's saying is that you don't need to 
to show yourself doing positive things and look how positive we are because by saying that, you're essentially saying, listen, we know you all think that we're negative. Yes. So we're going to show you some positive shit. What he's saying is we already got plenty of we being black people, already got plenty of positive shit. So why are we acting as if we don't? Yes. And I, I mean, I, listen, I got a chapter in my my, my, my new book, uh, Get Honest and Die Line, Why Small Talk Sucks, about... Pre-order right now. Pre-order yeah, right now. Pre-order, pre-order right now. About what I think about the current state of hip-hop. But I will say... Um, even when you say that, Taylor, about the mainstream, I've, I've I've had this conversation a million times. If you look over the last 14, 15 years, the top five rappers are even at, at any given time, you can put a top 10 of rappers, six or seven of them are super positive for the most part. The three biggest rappers of Kid. the last 15 years have Cole. been Drake, Cole, and Kendrick. Kendrick. There ain't nobody getting killed in their music. Ain't no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't no drug, have no no glorification of drug use or drug selling in their music. You know? Now, Future's that guy, too. I said, what about Travis Scott? Like, but I'm not saying he's not doing positive stuff, but though. That's a whole, saying... But that's a, that's a whole other way. I'm talking about the three biggest, the three-headed monster, even though it shit before, because Future. But Drake we tend too. to take somebody like Future and make Future the poster child for it all. Mm. With Chance the Rapper, Wale, Big Sean, they wasn't on that shit. At all, Rhapsody ain't on that shit. Yeah, I'm just saying, like we 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 we, we I don't know, man. We kind of like we look at one thing in hip hop and then focus on that and be like, this is the whole culture, and it's not. And we be like, we need more balance. All the balance is right there. Y'all just keep ignoring it. <laughs> Y'all ain't putting none of that on the scale. Mm-hmm. If you put some of that on the scale, it'll balance up. Mm-hmm. This is a very good point. But great I job with the I kids. Say, I wasn't even saying all that. But I just thought this was a great was job, cute. kids. Yeah. Not mad at the kids. <laughs> we love what you did. Keep on doing good stuff and stay in school. That's right. Okay. What else we got, Taylor? Um, Imagine that shit goes so viral that those kids drop out. Because they want to be rappers. rappers. Yeah. Elementary school dropouts. Take Northwest title. For, well, <laughs> for whatever reason, people thought this was weird of NLE Chopper. But I don't Why did that headline say if NLE Chopper was a bad bitch? That's what the song is called. One, two, three, let's go. If I was a bad bitch, I want to fuck me too. I want to suck me too. I want to suck me too. If I was a bad bitch, I want to fuck me too. I want to suck me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe we need a little positive. <laughs> this is positive. It this is, song technically. is self empowering. <laughs> this man is looking in the mirror and he's telling himself, I am a bad bitch. If I was a bad bitch, I would want to fuck me too. I would want to suck me too. I think that is a very positive message. Love suck thyself. It. Suck is crazy. Suck bro. that's crazy. Suck we just talked about sucking our own dicks last week on yeah, the podcast. That's crazy, bro. So, NLE Chopper, keep doing your goddamn thing. You know why this don't bother me? Because I Because you up... want to do the same thing. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you even saying, girl? <laughs> girl, you're crazy, girl. Uh, girl, you're crazy, girl. I grew up on Biggie Small saying, <sighs> Wow, you look so good, I'll suck on your daddy's dick. That's, That's a crazy. Okay. I need to see that girl, man. I grew up on Biggie saying I would fuck RuPaul before I fuck them ugly ass escape women, which I never understood that part because they're none of them are ugly. But it's just like it, 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 that's the type of stuff I grew up on. Did back so this day, don't did bother they make me. Something about that? We didn't care. Oh, and we really like, we didn't we didn't flinch when we heard that kind of stuff. It is weird that we didn't flinch at exactly. all. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> nice. He was nice. That's Big Papa. But most of the 90s was super progressive with the gay lyrics and stuff like that. We didn't even care. We didn't think nothing of it. Mm. You know what I mean? Birdman and Wayne used to kiss. We didn't give a fuck. Yeah. You know? We thought it was peculiar. <laughs> we did? Yeah. yeah we I did. think we thought it was peculiar, but we That's just, when it's that's when things yeah. started to shift with we like <laughs> we they, we pretty much shamed them to stop it. Yeah, people started monitoring. <laughs> that's when people started monitoring. Yeah. You know, they started monitoring that kind of stuff around that time. You know? But I, I listen, man, I come from a different era. Like this the play it again? That shit kind of box. I ain't never seen a crowd look so confused. That's what I'm saying. Yo, they're not even fucking that rolling loud. They're like, what the fuck is he talking about? How you sit on your old face? Don't stop it now, Chop. You should have stopped it when you was in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> don't stop, don't stop it on stage now. Let me hear it again. Let me hear it one more time. How you 
Yeah, you just want to see him grinding again. That's what you want. <laughs> He's a character. <laughs> That shit gotta become a TikTok challenge before TikTok get banned. That little pelvic thrust he's doing. Son, whoa! Shit, I see that part. I see that part. That was great. I want to text that Elise Hoppin' like, yo, if I was a bad bitch, fire. But see, if I text it to him, he might post it today or something. And it'd be all out of context. Like, that gay motherfucker Charlamagne would think that shit is fire. <laughs> yo, the suck me line is crazy. Because I've never been getting head like, yeah, I get why she's doing it. Like, like lucky. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Lucky. Uh, right? Uh, oh You're never envious God. of the girl sucking your dick. Yeah. That's crazy. It looks so good. I'll suck on your daddy's dick. It's way worse than that shit right there. You look so good. I would suck on your daddy's dick. Nah. That's crazy. But that, by the way, that was a but Richard Pryor line. we don't know how she looked. That's why we got to see her. Like, we've never seen a girl look so good we would do that. But maybe there is a girl that that's good, that's good looking. You're right. You know the problem with this generation? Y'all take everything too literal. We understood sarcasm and hyperbole. It was, yeah, it was just, it was, a, it was a funny line. That's it. By the way, that tweet is so fucking funny. I love when people tweet like this. What is that? Huh? What the fuck is he on about, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Cause that motherfucker, whoever that is, can't guard me. Is high somewhere. Probably got a little alcohol in him. He's and like, he looking this shit. Huh? He done he done played it like five, six times to make sure he hearing what he hearing. He like, huh? What the fuck is he on, though, bro? They said Shout that. out to NLE Chopper, man. Yeah, that's my guy. I fuck with NLE Chopper, man. I think on that same stage. What is this, a Rolling Loud recap? I guess, if I accidentally, I'm sorry. But, um... The fucking goat. Sexy, sexy red. motherfucking red. Of course she did. Is it you? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Sexy Red? Oh, that's real? Yes. <laughs> Man, get the fuck out of here. I thought that was somebody playing. Over. I thought somebody did a voiceover. <laughs> She, nah, there's no way. Nah, she's the goat. She's the goat. She don't give a fuck. I don't like that. That's good. <laughs> I love ghetto girls. You right? You right? I mean, because I, I love them, man. All right. All right. And then she tweeted, this is how it be when somebody hear you singing in the shower. She's absolutely fucking right. Yeah. That that is so relatable, Taylor. That's how you sound when you try to sing in the shower. <laughs> that's how we all sound. When we try to sing in the shower. <laughs> Sexy Red's the fucking goat. That man. is great. She's another one that they try to point to and try to act like hip hop is so goddamn negative. Man, that woman was pregnant and was still out there working. Working. You know what I'm working. saying? <laughs> if they, you tell me what's more progressive than that. That is the epitome of women's empowerment. Yeah. Cardi B also did too. Cardi B was out there doing well, it too. There's plenty of women that's done that. Like, First of all, don't take. Why are you trying to hate on sexy? I'm See, not there hating. you go. There you go. You I try to give a woman props. Person. Us men try to give a woman props, and here crabs, go a woman a shitting barrel. on a woman. Women are crabs it's in a barrel. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Like yeah. why? So you ain't say nothing. <laughs> Just say something positive. Yeah. Start with something positive. Yes, about sexy red. What can you say? It's it, positive. Yeah, it's International Women's Month. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Uh, what a hater. Wow. Damn. What a fucking wow. hater. Look, I'm not a fan of her, what she has on right now. Wow. But you can't just say something positive. What no, a hater. Not off that video, just in general. Yeah. Um, She's funny. There you go. Good. That was positive. Start with something positive. You're such a hater, yo. <laughs> Women are their <laughs> own worst hating? enemy. Really that is crazy. Why am I hating? You got the three men them. giving a woman props, and here come the Can't woman even... hating on her. God yes. damn. It's, it's really, it's really unfortunate. So... No, it's actually disgusting. We need mm. to call it what it is, Show mm. Yeah, why don't we call it disgusting? Because it is. Why do we the let women... them off why so you call... why? Hold on. I'm a hater. Because I'm saying she's not the first one that did it. Like mad women done it. Like putting out you others. You can't let her shine. You're not the only producer that does imaging. But if I was giving you your props on imaging and then somebody bought up just some other woman randomly, I'm sure that would make you feel away. Name them out. Point them out. <laughs> oh, they don't exist, huh? You the only one. <laughs> God damn, man. Jesus Christ, Taylor Hayes. 
<laughs> my God. What else we got in by any means necessary? Man? Um, the last one was the eat a, this is like eat from a last salad, week. bitch. Who they talking oh, to? Salad? <laughs> hey, eat a salad, come on. Bitch, nigga, eat a salad one more time. <laughs> Bitch, nigga, eat a salad. Just your life will hit different if exactly. you get your diet balance. Pause Wake these niggas up. Man, I'm tired of them sleeping, but not during rim, because deep sleep will keep us breathing. No sleep, bad diet, that's the cause of most diseases. Popping pills, not a cure. Bitch, that's just a treatment. Fool the real medicine, we healing with a passion. Restore the gut health through the intermittent fasting. Your body is simple. Pay attention what you added. You got to be intentional. Results is everlasting. Eat a salad. A metaphor to go and Get your greens, your wallet, the environment, it works for anything. Fire. You want a healthy diet, lean and green to keep you clean. Cocaine, sugar, white shit to make you fiend. Obesity and drugs, how the U.S. getting money. Hey. Meat banning three continents and 60 countries. Hey. They taking human meat and they telling us it's animals. We're all the missing children that I think these niggas cannibals. Oh, God, shit. God, the Mr. feel and Echinacea. Yo, he is. That's hard. That was good. Who is that? Who is that? Um, seven seven seven? No, <laughs> not him. I know this is Gabe P's on the radar. I don't know who that is. Yo, rapping, that was, but I the, fuck with it. The last half of it was incredible. I Spider? fuck with it. Spider, Spider? is that his Spider? name? I don't know. Right there, to, tail, you can click. I like it. It goes from Stunnerman. This is name. Who? Stunnerman. You sure that's his name? Yes. Yeah, just, just click the from Spider. I don't want to give the check. wrong person. No, props. this isn't. Just click that. This is just someone that reposted it. Bitch, hey, nigga, eat a this salad. Is, this is him right here. Hold on. Yeah, it's Stunner Man. Stunner Man. DJ Khaled need to eat a salad. Stunner Man, salute to you, young man. I fuck with that. Yeah, that was cool. Now that was dope. See, that's nice positive raps. Yeah, all positivity. That's nice positive me. raps. See? Yeah, we got good positivity going today. Taylor, you provided that. Now, check this out, though. Yeah. You see, it, like, how Taylor, like, lit up, smiled when we was talking about Stunner Man. But when we talk about sexy red, it was like I did. You see, see that. you see how we said yeah, women, see women, women. We're not about to do park that. Up, park up, We're not about nine. to do that. But the girl, you this little hate. You know what I mean? Holy shit! I didn't even, I didn't even put them together. Unfucking believable. But that yeah. is crazy how you did that. You're a fucking sexist. And <laughs> and let's talk about sexist. this. Out of everything that you played and all means necessary, not one, one woman, one, just one woman, mm. one, one that you could shit on. Just one that you shitting on. That's crazy. Are, are women me. not necessary this week? Well, hello. I did Dwayne Way too. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> ah, that was good. What is wrong with you? Shout out to D Wade. I don't know what is our Taylor is on. Today. That was a good. That, that was, was good, insane. Taylor. Taylor. That was a that was good. good. That was why good. Good. why y'all be great playing delivery. with D Wade? Yeah. That was a great delivery. It's crazy. Misdirection. Y'all want women. Y'all want men to be in more in touch with the softer side, and then when we are, we get those kind of jokes. They don't yep. want that shit. God yep. damn, y'all yeah. don't know what y'all want. <laughs> You know what God, God knows what you're doing. You know what the fuck they want. What they want. Bro, raw dick. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, let's do some. Let's pay some they bills. They do, Taylor. bro. God they do. Damn. They want that. Jesus raw. Christ. Let's pay some bills, Taylor. They want that raw dick. <laughs> they want that raw dick. <laughs> raw dicky. Why are you saying it like <laughs> that? <laughs> he put too much sass on that. <laughs> raw dicky. No doubt. Uh, salute the price line. When it comes to travel, we all have that happy place. Matt's ass on the screen. This guy is out of his mind crazy. Raw diggity, no doubt. Uh, Priceline, what's happening? When it comes to travel, we all have that happy place. Mine is Anguilla. Okay, uh, I know plenty of people like the Caribbean like I do. They like the beach. They like ski slopes. Couples get away, man. There's nothing like a vacation. Or uh, even a visit to that best friend you haven't seen in way too long. And Priceline wants to get you there for a happy price so you never have to miss a trip. My happy place, I just told y'all, is Anguilla, okay? My favorite place on the planet. Go there every summer. I'm um, going to buy a property there really, really soon. And uh, salute the Priceline, because thanks to Priceline's VIP family feature, you can go to your happy place more often while earning deals up to five times faster with a group. When one person from the squad travels, everyone gets more deals, and you even get to choose your crew. It doesn't have to be your actual family. It could be your neighbor, your roommate, your mailman, anyone. The more you travel, the more you save. So download the Priceline app today to save up to 60% off select hotels and go to your happy price with Priceline. This episode has also been brought to you by Convenience. 
That's what I'd say. Do you want more from delivery? You can always get it with Dash Pass by DoorDash. Listen, you already know DoorDash. If you are not living under a rock and you are somebody that is existing in this world right now, you're getting stuff delivered to your door with DoorDash. Well, Dash Pass is the most affordable way to get anything in your area delivered to your door, helping you save money and time with every DoorDash order. Now, how does it happen? How does that actually happen? Well, first you use the code IDIOTS24 and you get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Now, with $0 delivery fees and lower service fees on eligible orders, the Dash Pass makes it easy to save on restaurants, groceries, retail items, and all your local favorites that deliver on DoorDash. But think about this, you're getting all that savings so the Dash Pass pays for itself in two orders on average, making delivery even more worth it. You're essentially getting a discount on delivery, okay? Because it's gonna pay for itself after two orders, you're gonna order more than two things. So, plus Dash Pass gives you special access to exclusive promotions and member-only menu items, all for only $9.99 a month. <clears throat> the nine ninety nine a month you make back in the average, you know, two deliveries. You're going to do way more than that a month. Now you're saving money. You are spending nine ninety nine to save money. So, open the door to zero dollar delivery fees and more. Sign up for Dash Pass today, only on DoorDash. That is fifty percent off, up to a ten dollar value when you spend twelve dollars or more after signing up for Dash Pass with the code Idiots twenty four. Subject to change, terms and conditions apply. Now let's get back to the show. All right, let's do some church announcements. Show to you let's what we got. Let's do it. Um, yo, listen, the Life Tour, man. Go grab those tickets. We added uh, a few more cities and we added some more shows, okay? We are coming to Houston. We added a second show in Charlotte. We are coming to Nashville and we are coming to uh, Austin. All those tickets are on sale right now. We're also doing the uh, Crypto Arena. Shane Gillis and I are going to be doing that in May. Uh, if there are any tickets left for that, you can go to theandrewschultz.com and get those right there and uh thank you so much florida for taking us in those shows are fucking incredible out there and this uh not this weekend but next weekend la i will see you at the forum okay the house that fucking magic built the forum that's gonna be crazy i can't wait to see you guys all there dangershows.com for all those tickets go yeah, man. I uh, just want to remind y'all, make sure you get your tickets for the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival happening Saturday, April 27th at Pullman Yards in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm sorry all the VIP tickets are already sold out, but general admission tickets are still available. Uh, make sure you get them. We got Wallow and Gilly going to be on that stage. We got the Poor Minds Podcast, Dre and Lex on that stage. We got Horrible Decisions, Mandy and Wheezy on that stage. Uh, the Baller Alert Show is going to be on that stage. Will Lucas with Black Tech Green Money, he's going to be on there handling all your financial literacy. Uh, Debbie Brown, Deeply Well, so we got mental health and mindfulness covered. And Jess Larius will be there doing her podcast, Carefully Reckless. She will be doing her Just Fix My Mess uh, live from that Black Effect podcast festival stage. So get your tickets, man. You know, um, salute to everybody who got VIP tickets. Glad those are sold out. General admission is dope, though, because... If you was there last year, you know we got all the different activations all throughout the building. We got the Pitch My Podcast uh, station, and we got food trucks all around the place, and, you know, the bar and everything is in the back. Wasn't the bar in the back, Alex? Or am I tripping? Yeah. yeah, the bar and everything is in the back, so, you know... It's it's a, it's 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 a good get together, man. Um, sold out last year. We're gonna sell out again this year. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that's been getting tickets, man. Go to eventbrite.com to get your tickets, or go to blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. And just wanna remind y'all too, April 9th, my black country by the good sister Alice Randall, professor at Vanderbilt. Um, she uh, She's the next release off my book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing with Simon & Schuster. Her book will be out April 9th, but it's available for pre-order now. You see Beyonce got Act 2 coming, baby. Beyonce going full country, all right? The name of the album is Cowboy Carter. So don't y'all be out here with your cowboy hats on and, you know, your little stirrups and all of that shit and not know what the fuck Beyonce is talking about in regards to country music. Okay, so go get My Black Country by uh, Alice Randall. It'll be out April 9th, but you can pre-order it right now. Okay. What we got, Taylor? Well, she's not calling it a cowboy or a country album. Who's not coming out with a country album? <clears throat> Beyonce's saying it's a Beyonce album. It's not a country album. Who said that? She said it. I ain't see her say that. I read something totally different when I read her Instagram post. She said, go to her... God damn, you got to make that big pause. 
scroll up. <laughs> Today marks the 10 day countdown until the release of Act Two. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of the supporters of Texas Hold'em and 16 Characters. I feel honored to be the first black woman with the number one single on the Hot Country Songs chart. That would not have happened without the outpouring of support from each and every one of you. My hope is that years from now, the mention of an artist's race as it relates to releasing genres of music will be irrelevant. This album has been over five years in the making. It was born out of an experience that I had years ago where I did not feel welcomed, and it was very clear that I wasn't, but because of that experience, I did a deeper dive into the history of country music and studied our rich musical archive. I'm being honest with you, she read My Black Country by Alice Randall. I didn't want to tell y'all that, but that's what happened. So y'all need to go get the book so y'all can dive deep like Beyonce did. It feels good to see our music can unite so many people around the world while also ampli amplifying the voices of some of the people who have dedicated so much of their lives educating on our musical history. The criticism I faced when I first entered this genre forced me to propel past the limitations that were put on me. Act two is a result of challenging myself and taking my time to bend and blend genres together to create this body of work. I have a few surprises on the album and have collaborated with some brilliant artists who I deeply respect. I hope that you can hear my heart and soul and all the love and passion that I poured into every detail and every sound. I focused on this album as a continuation of Renaissance. I hope this music is an experience creating another journey where you can choose your, where you can close your eyes, start from the beginning and never stop. This ain't a country album. This is a Beyonce album. This is Act Two, Cowboy Carter, and I am proud to share it with y'all. It's going to be a country album. But she just said that it ain't a country album, it's a Beyonce album. Because she's she saying say that. that she's saying I'm Beyonce, I can make any type of music I want to. I agree with it's her. But it's clearly on that. A, it's clearly gonna be a country I album. I agree with her on that. I think that like she's in that Michael Jackson. Put a twist on it though. What's that? Sorry, a man was talking. The, <laughs> the uh the, <laughs> the like you know how Michael Jackson can put out Dirty Diana, which is a rock song, right? But it's not a rock song, it's a Michael Jackson song. That's right. Mm. And I think that Beyonce is in that territory where no matter what the music she puts out, it is a Beyonce. Yeah. Album. She's a fantastic artist. But, but like Charlemagne saying, the genre of music that it seems is coming out is she, most similar to Yeah, country. I think she said it a million times. It, she, she she says it. first of all, the album's called Cowboy Carter. <laughs> like I mean, goddamn. That she's, is on the, she's on the album with a cowboy. Of country. Head. It's quite country. And she's telling us that you know, she did she, she did country music. She got into a genre. She didn't feel welcome, so she decided to be like, fuck y'all. By the way, this is what most great artists do. Oh, you're not going to let me in? Watch what I do. Watch what I do. I already gave you a song that went number one. Now I'm going to give you a whole album. Ooh. And I'm going to have your favorite country people on here. She's remaking a Dolly Parton song. Oh, no. She's remaking a Dolly Parton song. <laughs> no, oh, no. I'm sure it'll be a Taylor Swift collaboration because I think Taylor Swift uh. album comes out a couple weeks after her or maybe a month after her. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, so Taylor? It's probably going to be Taylor on it. Post Malone will probably be on there. Wait, you don't which want I'm Taylor hate. and Beyonce to be on it? I didn't say that. I said she's definitely probably going to have Taylor. But then Taylor. you rolled your fucking eyes talking about the ghost. <laughs> Why would you do that? Man, Taylor's really coming for women this month. You hate right? women, yo. You can't support Damn. no women, It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I was literally just Israel. supporting Beyonce. And it's going to have nothing to woman. do with race. First of all, Beyonce's not a woman. She's Beyonce. <laughs> okay. That's a good-ass point, okay. yo. Beyonce's okay. not a woman. She's Beyonce. She's Beyonce. But the women, you hated on Taylor Swift and you she hated did. on Sexy Red. That's she crazy. Did. I didn't hate on Sexy Red. Yeah, you, you did. did. You did. You are Ow. fucked up. You did in such a way. It is disgusting. It. Yeah. It's disgusting. You You're a jerk. <laughs> You're a meanie. <laughs> You're a real fucking meanie. Y'all hate on me as a woman every day, though. No, we don't. Okay. You're not a woman. <laughs> <laughs> you're really up. not. How are you what a woman? Am I? Say how you're a woman. You say what? Say how you're a woman. How my woman could have a vagina and I can't. We don't know that. that means nothing. Also, well, who is proof of that? Caitlyn Jenner is a woman. Yeah, let me finish my sentence. Okay, Caitlyn go. Jenner is a woman. There are plenty of women who have dicks. <laughs> That's facts. There yeah, are plenty of women who have I'm dicks. I'm a naturally born woman. Oh, shit. Uh -huh. But what is that? How do we know? We don't Organic. know. Organic. Are no, you? you don't gotta bleep it because I'm proud to say I'm a naturally born woman. No GMO. Has a problem None. with it. Whole Foods. It comes to me. Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Whole Foods. <laughs> You're natural. You're organic. Whole Foods. Do you know what I mean? You get a crunchy peanut butter. <laughs> what else we got, Taylor? Yeah, how do we know that you're a woman? Tell us the other things. This is fun. That's all she got. That's all she got. You know what I'm saying? We don't have nothing else. Chris, are you a man? Yes, sir. How do we know that? You're going to have to take my word on it. Chris, are you Asian? No, sir. He, oh, wow. I don't know about all that. I don't know about that either. I don't know about <laughs> going to have to take my word on that one, too. Asian, Chris. Chris, I think you're Asian, bro. Is Chris the only Asian Jewish person we know? He is. 
Wait a minute. Let me think if I can think of another one. <laughs> an, a lot of us out here. An Asian Jew. Yeah, Asian Jew. He's the only one I know. Wow. What are you? Are you at a Jewish first though? I'm Irish and Jewish, yeah. Irish, Jewish, Asian. Oh, now that there's a little conflict out there in Palestine, you Irish all of a sudden, huh? <laughs> I never heard him say he's Irish. When have you never heard me say that? time Irish. in my life. <laughs> he's yeah. never mentioned he's Irish. One time on a podcast. Prime Minister of Ireland gave one fire speech in front of Joe boom. Biden. And, and you saw he quit today? He resigned today. Who? The Prime Minister of Ireland. Really? Yeah. Which well, one? The little one? I don't know the guy's name. I wonder why he resigned. What, the leprechaun? There is a little adorable one. Michael uh, Duncan or something. Or something he resigned today? Yeah, I just saw the headline. I didn't read the story. Into fucking resting. Uh, yeah, Irish. I, if if the name didn't give it away. Well, Wait, what? I don't know. Chris Morrow doesn't sound like a Jewish name. It does. Mm, how many Morrow? Jews? How many Jews you name? No name, Chris. Mm. I'm a McKelvey. Oh, yeah, Chris. There was a big controversy that my name was Chris. I mean, the most famous Jew is named Chris. Chris, right. Yeah. And Who's the, the most the famous Jew? One. Jesus Chris. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's who he's named after, right? It's true. It Jesus yeah. Chris. <laughs> so you are, you're a fucking, you're a big, big old Mick Jew, huh? Yo, <laughs> what if Jesus, what if Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, yo, you know that's how Moses didn't used to talk to the homie, though. <laughs> Jesus, what's up, player? What's up with you? Yo, you still hanging there? He hiding, he hiding, talking about walking on water. That's Jesus crazy, man. Jesus crazy. Yo, yo, Jesus told us he turned that water into wine. He know he came over here with that liquor already. He, we, we was already drunk. We ain't even noticed. You know what I'm saying? Jesus. Oh, Jesus. But what if Jesus? What if Jesus? Jesus is Latino and Jewish. Jesus. So your so your daddy never nutted in your mom. <laughs> you Latino and Jewish. Yo, yo, talk about yo, Jesus. You know, you, God, you gave us this sense of humor. Listen, this is that is hilarious, yo. Yo, Jesus. Yo, imagine all Jesus' homies, right? They believe in them, you know what I'm saying? They just kicking it with them. They listening to the story like, nah, you know, my mom and dad never even had sex. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> it was Jesus like, man, Jesus, man, what Jesus be on? Yo, <laughs> yo what, what, what the hell, bro, be on? <laughs> 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 so, we needed Twitter 2,000 years ago. Twitter 2,000 years ago would have been crazy. Like, huh? Uh, am I hot? <laughs> you know, this white dude's walking on wall. <laughs> man, man, what bro beyond, man? Yo, all of them probably used to get that. Noah. Noah just out there building an ark. Oh, for and nothing. This, you know what I'm saying? Yo. And just think about it. I'm going to build this big-ass boat. It's about to rain. And for 40 days, 40 nights, the earth going to get flooded. And I'm taking all the animals with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Huh? What the fuck, bro, beyond? Yeah. <laughs> you know? This guy came by and tried to buy two sheep. <laughs> <laughs> tried to buy two sheep. I can only fuck one. You want yeah. fuck two? <laughs> Imagine Noah going to buy two sheep. Yeah. What you got planned for the night, Noah? Yeah. <laughs> he asked me if I knew anybody with a giraffe. I said, I said no. <laughs> Fuck, you need a giraffe for it, Noah. You a giraffe for bro. Yeah. You already hired the giraffe pussy. Clearly. <laughs> 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 ah. Oh, my God. The Bible's a wild book, yo. The Bible's crazy the when you Bible think about it. The Bible is absolutely it. insane. It's crazy. Yo. Some of the things that the Bible gets away with, we don't discuss. Sodom enough. and Gomorrah? Crazy. Yeah. Crazy? Yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah was insane because that was the first. Damn. Now that I think about it, that wasn't the first time we realized women didn't listen. It was Eve. Eve. But Eve. Sodom and Gomorrah was, was a woman who did not listen. Oh, I thought they was butt fucking. No, I, thought that I mean, was that thing. too. Yeah. But Lot and his family. God told them to get the hell up out of there. Didn't and God said, if you can go back and find one good person, then we'll I'll spare the whole city. And they couldn't. So Lot went back looking to find one good person. He couldn't. So God said, get the hell out of here and don't look back. And if you look back, I'm going to turn you to salt. Who looked back? Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor. Turn to salt. Didn't his daughter try to fuck him? Who? I think that happened. I ain't heard that part now. Yeah. You didn't know uh, when he passed out drunk in the cave. No, I thought, to do no, what? I thought Lot. 
I thought Lot's like daughters or whatever, like they didn't want him to leave. And so they try to seduce him and like have sex with him or something like that. Huh? Yeah. Can you I look that up? That one. Yeah, me... That's the Rick James version. <laughs> 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 I heard that one. Listen, motherfucking, um, what if Jesus was a Latino judo? I think he is. Jesus Christ? Jesus Chris? Right? Carpenter? You know what I'm saying? He's probably just going to Home Depot, get him some wood. Come on. To make whatever the fuck he needs. It holds up. <laughs> I think it does. It holds up. Juan Epstein, I guess. Bro. Yeah. It holds up. <laughs> it holds up. What else we got, Taylor? Um, did Bruno say Mars, $50 million. Cap. Yeah, I don't believe that either, man. You know, no, here's the thing. Who would leak that, Charlotte? That's what I'm so confused yeah. by. If you work at if you work at the MGM and he's under contract with you, you wouldn't leak that to make exactly. him look bad. Exactly. So who's leaking that? And, and who gets to a fifty million dollar gamb a gambling debt? Yeah, nah, I can't. I when, just... At some point, you got to know you're doing too much. Right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bruno, you're a million in. Hey, you're five in. Ten. You're ten in. You're no. 15 in. 20, you no. get all the way to 50 before you realize that you're doing too much? No, no, no. That's now, a problem. I will say, though, when Jess Hilarious did, Jess Hilarious sold out the MGM in D.C. I think it was in D.C. It was one. It was somewhere in that area. And she sold out the MGM. And Bruno Mars had sold it out the week before. And she was there on a Saturday. And, you know, you know how sometimes you walk in venues and people are like, yo, you just missed Bruno Mars. And I'm thinking Bruno was just walking through the building or something. I'm like, oh, what was Bruno doing here? Oh, no, no, no. He had a show here last week, but he'd been here all weekend. He'd been here all week gambling. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> wow. I was like, no. how the fuck would he be gambling in? Where's an MGM at? I don't know if it's in D.C. or Virginia. It might be D.C. It's in, it's on, it's in the D.C., Virginia area. I'm like, why would he stay here and gamble yeah. all Yeah. No, that doesn't make sense. Mm. But uh, that's got to be a, a Vegas play. Yeah, MGM's in Vegas. Well, no, no, they might have multiple. They got an MGM in D. They got an MGM in uh, it's an MGM Arena or some shit. But Atlantic it's in City. Yeah, and they got they got casinos and everything. No, it's not Atlantic City. It was in DC, hmm. DC or Virginia, one of them. Um, what else we got, Taylor? Did y'all? I mean, I don't know if this is bef after y'all time, but. This whole Nickelodeon thing. Did y'all watch it? None of y'all watched it. No, I can't watch documentaries like that. But no. what is it? That what happened? Is, so, basically, they're kind of trying to out the mega producer, Daniel Snyder, for all his... I'm going to be honest with you. I don't need whole documentaries about that. Like, I'd rather you just tell me the story. If there's criminal charges to be brought against the guy, bring up the criminal charges. Like, I don't like to see people's traumas exploited for hour-long documentaries, yo. That shit is too tough to watch, bro. And then, like, anytime you hear about something happening to kids, if you're a person, you know, like myself, who's experienced that type of uh, abuse, you know, as a child, or... If you're hearing about children experiencing this, if you got kids, that's where your mind automatically goes. I don't want to watch the whole documentary about yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, it, I not, mean, why? Yeah, why haven't they pressed charges? That's what I'm. That's saying. what I'm saying. Like, there's charges to be pressed. Press charges. Yeah. I think it's almost child abuse if you're willing to have your kid be a, a child star. You said that before. I really do. I don't disagree with you. Especially because I, 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 I only know this part of the story because Jess was doing it and Jess was domestic today. But the story about how the dads used to watch, I don't know if it was Daniel, yeah. but he used no. to watch somebody like kind of like touching his son inappropriately. And it wasn't Daniel, it was uh somebody Ryan Peck or one of them. Yeah. I don't know, but he was touching, they say he said he used to look and be like, that's kind of strange. Why are you touching my son like that? And then they stopped make they stopped letting the father come to the set and told said send the mother. And the, the, the dad told the mother, make sure you watch him. I don't trust that guy. If, if I got to say all of that around nah, an adult, done. fuck that. I don't want my child around you. Done. Yeah. And I might beat your ass off GP just because. They mm -hmm. were saying the doc, too, like some of the parents are like, because a lot of the kids, they were making the living for the family. That's so the thing. These they parents like, want I, their I kids to be a, yeah. a star even more than the kid. The kid don't know anything. Right. I don't like it. Mm. But, now, listen, I don't have no problem with people like that being exposed. But my thing is... Put them behind bars, bro. Yeah, press like, charges yeah. or something. I just don't like the exploitation, these four, six-hour-long documentaries. Because the people making these documentaries, they're not making these documentaries because they actually care, yo. This shit is a ratings game. Uh, 
They're still taking advantage of the diddled kids. They're still exploiting the kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like kids like that should be talking to therapists. Why put a camera in front of their face and make them relive such traumatic experiences? Hmm. You know what I mean? Just for our viewing pleasure. 100%. No, it's uh, fucked up. It's fucked up. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner and Lamar Odom do have a podcast. Has anybody listened to it yet? No, but that name is fantastic. You Ball gotta of get your court. That. They announced it at the wrong time, though. And the reason I say they announced it at the wrong time, like you can't be a pair of people launching a podcast the same time that Lamar, I mean, uh, LeBron James and... And JJ. Nah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Or you got to talk about what we all want to talk about. Does she get stripped or not? Yeah. We just want to see that meat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you guys want to see it? I just feel like they could have came up with a way more creative name. Keeping up with sports, bro. He's trying to go with keeping up with the Kardashians. That's that whack. Oh, I didn't even put that together. Lamar, He's... you've had an amazing life. Caitlin, you've had two amazing lives. Like, give us something, man. You know what I'm saying? Combine the two things or something, man. Like, do something. You yeah, I, I mean? think the balls in your court is hilarious. Balls in your court. You let's do let's pay some bills and do some asking idiots, Taylor. Because we got to be up. Oh, Pornhub. Yo, salute to Pornhub, yo. Yeah, what happened with that? <laughs> so they banned it in Texas or something like that? Pornhub and affiliated sites block access in Texas in legal battle over age verification law. In the latest installment of the dispute... Make that bigger, Taylor, pause. In the latest installment <laughs> of the dispute between adult content... Mm -hmm. Man, I don't fucking know. Texas is just what but, is what is Texas, Texas about? South anymore? Carolina banned Pornhub too. But like, I, I'm actually wondering about this. There should be some way to verify that somebody's old enough to watch it. We don't want kids there watching is. it. Yeah, but oh. now you have to submit your ID. That's what do, it was. Do you want to submit your ID every time you go to a porn site? That's crazy. And every, I, listen, I don't want to, but I do understand that there should be some sort of restriction so kids don't. don't yeah, go. but how do you do it outside of that? That's the so only way make, you can do make it. Make them submit the ID. Yo, listen, man, I'm one of them old school guys born in 1978. I, don't, I love Pornhub, but I don't respect it. The reason I don't respect it is because I used to have to bring Playboys and Penthouse magazines and a Trapper Keeper. You know what I'm saying? Respect, and yeah. you know what I mean? You couldn't even have the whole Playboy or Penthouse in the Trapper Keeper. You had to rip the pages out. You know what I mean? Because it would look too thick and it would look too suspicious. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I used to have the Penthouse magazines, just pages in my Trapper Keeper. That's how we used to share. Where would you jerk off day. usually? I didn't jerk off back then. I didn't start jerking off until I was older. Like how? At what age did you first? Probably like 18, 19, yo. What? Uh... Absolutely. Absolutely. I wish I had jerked off more when I was young because I feel like jerking off is like an exercise that makes your penis bigger. So I wish I would have did it when I was young, but I was not jerking off when I was young. Really? I was getting molested at eight. What I need to jerk off for? You no, know, it's so yeah. crazy though. <laughs> what? Psychologically, when that does happen to you at eight, yeah. and you and all your homeboys are sitting around talking about how y'all get in action, probably all of us was getting molested. Who the fuck knows? But then you get older, right? So like eight, I think I probably lost my virginity when I was like. 16 or something like that. I never felt like I wasn't getting no action. Your whole life, wow. Yeah, because I was always getting sucked getting up action, relative, you know what yeah. I mean? Always getting swallowed up by, <laughs> by, her, by her older relative, right? So it's like God by the time damn. you're 16 and you start getting action, I didn't start jerking off until I got my heart broke. What? Yeah, first time I jerked off, I cried. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Say, wait, what do you mean? Because <laughs> I, I was sure. Because I thought oh, that was Jehovah's, something that losers do. You were Jehovah's do. Witness, right? Huh? You were Jehovah's Witness. It has nothing to do with it, but oh. yes. Yeah. Because I thought they're not allowed to masturbate. No, that had nothing to do with it. I just, I just thought it was though, for losers. Yeah. I literally thought jerking off. I thought you jerked off because you was a loser. You couldn't, you couldn't get, get no pussy. You couldn't get no goddamn action. Mm -hmm. You wow. know? So when I got my heart broke around 17, 16, 17. So I was you the, felt like a loser. That's why you jerked off. I don't need you to, I don't need you to uh, <laughs> reinforce anything I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I told so y'all I felt like a loser. For the first time. And then did you feel like a loser or were you like, Yes, I cried. Wow. I laid in the bed jerking off crying, and that was weird as fuck. Did you not while you cried? Yes. What is that like? I was just crying. I was like, what the fuck? But I was like, damn, this should feel kind of good. You said you jerked off on your knees before. No, after I started jerking off more. First time I jerked off, I was laying in the bed. Wow. Then later on, I started doing it on my knees. Why would you go on your knees to jerk off? Just Cause I didn't like I didn't like that shit busting off on like my stomach and shit like that. You know uh, I'm not rather yeah, put yeah. that shit on the fucking. I mean, you could stand. Bro. I nah, I get. Wait, you don't get lightheaded when I stand. Yeah, you stand and bust one. You. 
No. no. Do you think there was a little part of you was like hoping some guy with a huge cock would walk in? <laughs> what? And what? you're just what? on your knees already like, oh no, what are you doing? Oh my God. <laughs> like a portal. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here? <laughs> oh, no. I was just praying. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! <Jeez -o. laughs> oh, my God. Taylor, go to that second story. This is amazing. Mm. This is a tip. Avoid stomach sleeping, y'all. According to the New York Post, one of the main concerns is that sleeping on one's front can worsen lower back pain, a common ailment among those who prefer this sleeping position. Okay, Dr. Tony Nalda, make it bigger, tail from the Scoliosis Reduction Center warns that sleeping on your stomach can worsen neck and back problems. This sleeping position can affect breathing by compressing the diaphragm and putting undue pressure on the spine. As a result, it may become difficult to take deep breaths. Stomach sleeping can cause more than breathing difficulties. It can also strain the cardiovascular system. When you lie on your chest, blood flow is restricted, which complicates the heart's job. It could potentially increase the risk of cardiovascular problems over time. This restricted circulation can lead to higher blood pressure, which is particularly problematic for people with pre existing existing heart conditions. Some people who sleep on their stomach also complain about anal pain, especially in prison. <laughs> so, <laughs> just want y'all to know that sleeping on your stomach is not good. This guy's a fucking <laughs> okay? The Sleep, a sound, the sleep Foundation <laughs> advocates for back or side sleeping as a healthier alternative. Side okay. sleeping... Side sleeping what? It hurts. Like, my arm always hurts. We don't sleep on your arm. You don't sleep on your arm. You put your oh, arm I in a position. I, always, I sleep on my stomach. Let's pay some bills. <laughs> <laughs> None of y'all sleep on your stomach at all? No. Really? I mean, there's times where I would, like, go I'm back I'm sure it's times, yeah. yeah. That's the most comfortable position. Not for me. Laying on my back is the most comfortable position. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. Don't babies sleep on their stomach? Actually, mm -hmm. you want them not to. You're not yeah, supposed you're not to. Supposed oh, really? To. Yeah. Oh. That's it. That's, yeah. You try to keep them off. And then you do what's called tummy time so they, they can start to strengthen their necks. Mm. Look at you. Mm -hmm. Big daddy. <laughs> Let's pay some bills, Taylor, and then do some asking idiots. All right, guys, this episode has also been brought to you by Vessi. Let's talk about Vessi for a second. When navigating the city during rush hour, Vessi are really my trusted companions. See, listen, their waterproof technology and comfortable fit makes every commute a breeze. I'm telling you, these will be your go-to sneakers, especially on those rainy days or snow days where the slush piles up, or now we're up into spring where it's going to be raining nonstop in New York City. That's right. That is our spring season. And the vest he's going to have you locked in, okay? They ensure dry and comfortable feet no matter the weather. Definitely check out their Stormburst boots. The boots are fire. It is a winter essential, but I also want you to look at all the things that are coming up for spring. Remember, especially if you're in the Northeast and you know we're going to get nonstop rain all spring, make sure that you got something that is going to cover up your feet and make it good in every single condition. They got the Dimatex technology and the Vessi shoes, and that means that you're always ready for unexpected weather shifts. Rain, shine, they've got you covered. The removable insoles in my Vezzi shoes allow for personalized comfort. They adapt to my feet's knees, ensuring maximum support. Vezzi's aren't just shoes. They're a lifestyle and neighborhood. From work to play, they keep up with my busy schedule without missing a beat. Now, if you're like me and you want to be ready for anything rain or shine, head to Vessi.com slash idiots. That is V-E-S-S-I dot com slash idiots for 15% off your entire purchase for free shipping to Canada, the United States, Australia, Japan, Taiwan, Korea, and Singapore. All you got to do is go to Vessi.com slash idiots and get that 15% off and that free shipping, okay? Now, this episode also, Charlemagne, is brought to you by Squarespace. Did you know that? No, I didn't. That's right. Thanks again to Squarespace for supporting this week's episode of the podcast. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website. Engage with your audience and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time. Upload, organize, and access all your content in one place. If you have a business, you need a website. And in order to get a website, you need Squarespace. Because with the new asset library, you're going to be able to manage all your files from one central hub and use them across the Squarespace platform. 
platform. Get started with one of their professional website templates with designs for every category and use case. They customize your look, update the content, and add features to fit your unique needs. What they basically have are templates that you can customize, but they're already built out, so you're not just going to some web designer and they're charging you out the ass for a completely unique site. You're gonna have a completely unique site, and it's part of their system. So you can use the insights to grow your business. You can learn where your site visits and sales are coming from. These are incredibly important channels that you can use to analyze your data and grow your business. You can improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular products and content. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's get back to the show. Let's do some asking idiots. That's right. I got a dinner with one of my Italian homies tonight. That's why I wore my tracksuit. Oh, shit. Where you going? <laughs> oh, I was going to a nice spot in Jersey. Oh, which one? Um, I don't know. I mean, I know, but I don't want to say. Okay. Fair I don't enough. know how it is. Yet. I don't know how the food is. <laughs> I don't want to just give him a <laughs> shout out. I've never been to the spot, you know. But, but you've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. I wore a tracksuit, nice watch, represent with my Italian homie. You know what I mean? Is he going to bring that? Bring what? Is he going to wear a tracksuit and nice watch? Like Italians always wear tracksuits and nice watch. Oh, this is like an Italian Italian. Oh, top, big, but come on, man. Like a big Ginzo. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Just is that big, like Gizzo? No, just a meatball. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. Is that, I don't know. Is that racist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's a meatball. I don't know about that. I mean, that. they're all a bunch of meatballs. Jesus Christ, really? <laughs> oh, no, that's my guy, guy though. Like, it's my guy. Like, he took me. Like, I've, I've been to the feast with him in Little Italy oh, really? before. Oh, yeah. What's yeah, his yeah. name? I don't want to say. Do I know him? I don't know if you know him or not. A but lot. this tracksuit is dope, though. This is Legacy of Resilience. Ooh. Yeah, salute to Legacy of Resilience. They're a nice, um, nice brand. I like it. How do you know him? Um, the guy, my guy, Don Juan. Don Juan. Oh, is that his brand? Yeah, Don Juan Designs Legacy of Resilience. He, Don Juan has made so many great brands over the years. He made uh, Academics back in the day. Mm. He used to do the Velours for Sean John. He had PRPS, which was a huge brand. He's got a brand now called Art, Art Meets Chaos. And uh, now he's got Legacy of Resilience. His track suits and Velours and stuff like that. So, Love it. You know, for somebody born in 1978 my, like myself, I like the comfort of it all. Need it. Um, ooh, who we got? Mr. Harituto, great question. He says, who taught you sarcasm? Schultz? Wow, that's a good that's a good question. I don't I don't recall. Who taught me sarcasm? Uh I, I don't know. I do not know. I would imagine maybe I learned it from like movies or entertainment or maybe some sort of like yeah, I don't, I don't know if my dad was the most sarcastic or my mom was the most sarcastic, so I don't think I learned at the house. But probably there's probably like a character on a TV show or something like that that was sarcastic, and then maybe I picked it up from there. But I don't even think I use sarcasm that much, maybe a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I don't know who taught me sarcasm. I, I know the first person I saw it in was my dad. Mm. You know, now that I go back and look at it, I thought it was just humor, but he was just really, really sarcastic, which is probably why... I tend not to take things so serious or I tend to, you know, we can discuss traumatic, horrendous stuff that has happened to us with humor and sarcasm and satire because yep. that's what he used to do. Right. Literally. Like, I, I in, in most corner, it felt like everybody was sarcastic. Literally. Yeah. Like, nobody took anything too serious. Everything was, everything had a hint of sarcasm to it. So I would, pro I would definitely probably say, um, say my pop's. Um, ooh, Jacob's Unlimited said, how do you manage starting to get real money for the first time? Easy call, Jacob. Act like you ain't getting it. There you go. <laughs> right? There you go. Don't let that shit change you in no way, shape, or form. But you, see, the problem with some of y'all, y'all getting big money, a lot of money for the first time. Yep. So you've never been traumatized. Meaning, I've been fired seven times in life. So you know what it's like. Four times from radio. I've been fired from Taco Bell. I've been fired from Demo in the Mall. I've been fired from a company called Industrial Acoustics Company. I've had to, you know, collect unemployment checks. You know what I mean? Like, my wife has had to stand in front of the judge and tell the judge why we're we not supposed to get evicted. So it's like, that's always in my mind. Yeah. And I've always been a saver. Like, 
I'm the guy that used to like the Mike. I'm the guy that when I used to sell crack, I used to like to watch my money turn into a bigger, 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 bigger knot. Yeah. So I'm like that now. I'm like that now with everything. Like I don't, I've never spent a television check. Really? Man, when I saw Marshawn Lynch say that shit, and I think I saw Shaq say that shit back in the day, and I was like, yo, that's dope. And I said to myself, whenever I get to the point where I got several streams of income coming in. Not touching that TV money. And I and I don't. Matter, I mean, it's a lot of money I don't touch. Like I don't touch like 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 for like real estate, right? Like I have I have buildings that I own that I lease in Monk's Corner. I don't touch that money. You right. know what I mean? Right. TV chat. I've never any and I've done late night television. Shit. In the last season, what was it, two seasons, whatever, whatever. I've never touched a TV chat. Wow. Ever. Wow. Anytime I do television, yeah. whether it's a daily show or anything, that shit just goes into, I pay the taxes on it. That's it. And that's it. Don't touch that money. There's no need to. Right. Smart. You know? Yeah, that is smart. So how do you manage starting to get real money for the first time? Act like you're not getting it, Jacob. And it's hard, Jacob. You're going to find a hard time doing it. Everybody wants to, you know, you buy a sports car, you're going to want to see how fast it goes. Shit. But. Why well, buy one when you can rent one? No, 100%. It's uh, the same feeling. 100%. I, I guess I'm just saying it's like when you first get a couple bucks, it, you're going to want to flex because your whole life you haven't had anything. And then you have the opportunity to now buy shit. And you're like, okay, I want to buy shit. And then after a while, you start to realize, oh, wow, yeah, just buying shit doesn't make me happy or anything. And just doing the work does. There's only two people I talk about money with. Okay. And that's my wife and my mom. Oh, interesting. Cause like when you see certain things, it's like this is unfucking believable. Yeah, and you like, my wife understands because she been with me twenty six years. Yeah, my mom understands because she, she's been with me this mom. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. the fact that she, the most she ever made was thirty thousand dollars in her life, and she shows me old deeds of like what my grandfather's taxes were and shit like that. And you like shit. God you know damn, what I mean? So yeah. people like those are the only two people I show things like. That too, yeah, and you know, to a, you know, and, and it's got to be this certain things, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, Briz Breezy says, which two presidents in history would you like to see in a fight? Oh, this is a good one. Hmm. Who'd you like to see in a fight? Hmm. Barack Obama, <laughs> definitely Barack, and uh, hmm, <coughs> maybe Joe Biden. <laughs> wow! Come on, why? Let me make it better than that. Like who? Like who? I'm just saying, you know, Shit's Barack Obama, Bosch, Biden, garbage for ratings, bro. Yeah. What? You know what the matchup would be? You think it's? I want to see George Bush fight. Garbage. Who is it? Y'all ain't trying to get no ratings. Well, bro. it's Trump. If you want Trumpito, yeah. you know, Trump and who? Obama, but Trump. <laughs> Come on, you got all the best element. First of all, you got the two most popular presidents ever. Right? Interesting. I would think, right? Then you got the race factor. You know what I mean? What about Abraham Lincoln versus Barack Obama? That's who I was going to say. No. Why? Because he's he was he fought somebody. I mean, he was a famous kind of, I think he fought with a sword or something. Really? Yeah, I think he was in some sort a duel? of weird, duelish, not with a gun. Sorry. He clearly wasn't a gun. No, he, he challenged somebody and he smartly, I think, picked some sort of weapon that gave him an advantage because, he, you know, he was like 6'4". Yeah. Abraham Lincoln ain't gonna yeah, sell no tickets in 2024. Yeah. yeah, I guess you're right. But Lincoln, okay. Lincoln ain't making a stream nothing, bro. But Barack versus Trumpito. Barack versus Trump is the one. And who wins? Barack. Easy? Yeah. I don't know. Trump's big. Yeah, That's Trump, what I'm saying. I don't Trump. know if it's easy. Trump could grab him. Got some size. By the pussy. By that puss. You know what I mean? Dude, that's a fire move. Yes. That's <laughs> That'd a be fire his fatality. Move. That's a fire you fatality. Know what I'm saying? Oh, I, dude. Yeah, I got Trump because the trash talk would be crazy yeah, leading up to the fight. It would be nuts. And honestly, the race element alone sells the fight. Yeah. Phenomenal. There's, uh, come on, y'all. Y'all trying to sell a fight or not? Like, I don't see no fucking Abraham Lincoln versus nobody. Like, eh. I mean, seeing on a stage would just be cool, but I hear you. Yeah, yeah. Barack versus Trump would be would be very entertaining. It'd be the best, the best one. Yeah, you got to go to those press conferences. Those press conferences are worth just as much of the fight. I think Obama will win. Okay, give us one more. Oh, this is a good one. How has having a kid, kids affected your marriage, Schultz? How has having a kid, kids affected my marriage? Uh, trying to have the kid. Um, Brought my wife and I even closer. 
And that was like really cool because I think going through what we went through can cause a lot of damage potentially to relationships. So that was really awesome. Um, it's what I've noticed is that like when you have a kid and we have a baby nurse, there's less time for my wife and I just to be alone. Mm. And when you're not alone as much, there's less time for you to resolve conflicts. So it's easy for things that are little to build up. Mm. And then when you have to resolve them, they feel bigger, but you're like discussing something. You're like, why are we, why are we arguing about this thing? That's not even that big a deal. That's true. So it was something that we've had to like make adjustment and go, Hey, Hey, let's not let something fester. Even if we have no alone time or minimal alone time, let's address it before it can like grow. Mm. But that, yeah, so that was a thing to get used to. Also, just being a needy bitch. Like, I didn't realize how needy I was. You know, the, the first- Really? Oh, dude, the first few weeks, my- Scorpio. But yeah, but like the first few weeks, <laughs> your wife is just keeping your baby alive. And I and I didn't, I wasn't complaining, but I felt, I was like, oh, wow, I really like want her attention or I want her time. And I would just shut it down because she's doing the most important thing, which is keeping our baby alive. But- it, it was interesting to see that happen. Were you like, look, 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 look what I can do? I bet you, <laughs> I bet you there's, I bet you there was versions of that. How crazy is that? I bet Kathy you probably was, tried to breastfeed. I did. <laughs> that, I did. I, that he probably tried to I breastfeed did. you. Oh my god. <laughs> I um, I agree with everything Schultz just said, and I also feel like, yeah, I, I think kids. Kids do bring you closer together if you and your wife already have that bond. Yes. For me, it's really incredible to watch because me and my wife have literally been together for 26 years. Yeah. So we were together when we were kids. So to watch her in this era of her life where she's a fantastic wife and a fantastic mother, mm. it just makes you appreciate her even more because yeah. you like damn she killing it god thank you yeah. for blessing me with this person amen who makes all of our lives so much easier amen to that because she's the ceo of the house she that's holds it. it all together she keeps it all together like i couldn't do it that's it you know what i'm saying that's like it. i know i personally couldn't do it and i watch other men out there who got you know uh children children by women that they don't even like that's got to be torture. Torture. That's got to be hell. So, you know, for me, it, it, it yeah, I, I think it affects your marriage. Just it's it, already hard when you love that person more than anybody on the planet. That's right. I imagine that's right. not loving them. That's right. Fuck. That's right. So, so it, it, just, it just, for me, it just makes you appreciate yeah. your wife. Amen. Even more. Amen. Like, like whatever you felt for your wife, whatever love you had for her, whatever appreciation you had for her, when you see her operating as a mother, mm -hmm. it takes all of that to a whole other level. Also, when they do anything for you, knowing that they're already handling the kids and everything, Man. that any little extra thing they do feels... Mm -hmm. In incredible there's like a immense gratitude you man. get breakfast out of nowhere you're man. like yo with all the shit you gotta do you still thinking of me man that's fire that works the other way too though what? sometimes if the kids get all of they're eating like what the way the fuck is daddy playing ain't none of, none of y'all be eating if it wasn't for me you know that. <laughs> like <laughs> This is, this is every now and then. It's like, God damn. Man, take care of me first. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. Why don't I just stop working? <laughs> Why don't we see what happens if I just stop working? Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to threaten your hey, whole family. But you know what's so funny about that? Like, you know, when you kid, like, you're, like my five year old would be like, Why you got to go back in the city again? I got to go work. Why? Well, if I don't work, we don't eat. Why wouldn't we eat? <laughs> Why would we eat? We would still eat. <laughs> <laughs> and they would. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? They that's, would. That's just how we like, justify it. That's that how we that. justify it. Like, if we don't work, nothing. Like, no, everybody going to starve to death. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. no. Nah, we got some money saved. Yeah, we'll They're be gonna fine. Eat. They'll be okay. Yeah, they'll be yeah. fine. Um, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. Dude. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Please.